we're down here in the footing under what is really the main event as far as the retaining condition. This is a footing that's going to be substantial. I told Scott Harvey to not hold back on this and he wouldn't. He put a keyway in here to increase the resistance to sliding. When we were digging this last week, Brian hooked this pipe. We didn't know it was in there. It was not on any drawings. It was not recorded on the uh, escrow documents or the title search didn't show up anything about easements for a drain line. So he stuck a, a tooth in there and it, wait, wait, he said, I hooked something. Now that's a good operator that can feel a pipe when he's pulling up dirt. Sure enough, there's a six inch perf pipe that was put in here at the time that the lots were constructed. We put a fire hose in there. It daylights, heck, almost a quarter of a mile downhill. They put this in here to mitigate the water, to get it out below the retaining walls to kind of dry up any problems that were in the subgrade. Put it in washed rock, put filter fabric around it. But the city's not gonna let me use it, okay? They're not gonna let me use this to, to get the water out from behind my wall because they don't have a record of it. I don't know why they don't have a record of it. I mean, this did not just spring into existence and it was done properly, but they don't have an easement and they don't know who's contributing water and, and, and I guess I understand that, but it still is a little hard to take. This footing is eccentrically loaded. Now, that's another way to say a cantilevered footing. The wall is gonna occur out here, about six inches back from the edge. By the way, I'm putting about a two inch buffer between the property line. This string is property line. This string is where the form's gonna occur, just so there's no danger of encroaching on the neighbor's property. A cantilevered footing, an eccentrically loaded footing, has the vertical bearing issue right here over on the edge. And all of that weight in the footing and all that bearing condition in, condition in the footing is dealing with the weight of the backfill, bearing down on the footing, and resisting the overturning moment on the wall. You know, if I brought the, the wall back and centered it on the footing, then more has to lift for the thing to rotate. And there, in, anyway, that's one of the things that a structural engineer figures out. And I specifically asked him to cantilever this footing so I wouldn't have a whole bunch of concrete sticking out onto the neighbor and sort of degrading the use of his property over there. It's all gonna be below grade, but it's still a cleaner, sort of more elegant solution to a retaining wall like this. 16 inches of concrete in the footing, eight feet of concrete in the wall. That's gonna stop, you know, top of wall is gonna be up here someplace, only over here. Backfill, level out, bring that dirt in, and then stack boulders, the riprap, at a one to two going on up to established grade. Throughout the summer, when I've been working with engineers and talking to you about site conditions and getting ready to go to the city and, you know, kind of doing my due diligence, I've been thinking, you know, the rain's coming, you gotta hurry. And now here I am, I've got uh, best case right now. I'm in the first week of September. Best case, I've got six weeks until it's wet. Worst case, I've got two weeks till it's wet. And so what, you say? Well, here's so, here's so what. If that bank gets saturated, gravity's gonna push it down. So even though Western Oregon is on fire right now, you've probably seen the news coverage of the forest fires. That's why we're so hazy. Hazy nothing, we're smoked in here. Our air quality is terrible. We're living under a cloud of forest fire smoke right now, and there's a lot of people praying for rain, but not me. So this is not a typical edge form. A more typical edge form would be th three quarter inch form ply, two by four whalers nailed on there. But I didn't feel like building those. I had junk to bring out from the shop. I had some new lumber. I thought I'm just gonna build this and make it a throwaway. I'm done with concrete except for my own project. So I don't want to stack or inventory forms anymore. So this form works a little light. These turnbuckles are awesome. This thing can be used to make an adjustable brace. You can line walls with it. In this case, I'm going to put them on about every, I think, maybe 40 inch, something like that. I'm going to hold them down so that they're not fouling up the screeding of the concrete.
there's not room in here to put any kind of a kicker in. So I've just cut some shims out of two by six that just transfer the side load straight out to the dirt. They'll strip easy, no nails required. When you can live without a nail, live without it. But sometimes um, it's a mistake, but it takes some judgment. This thing is gonna be completely buried. And so you ask, why worry about plumbing and lining it? Well, uh, the obvious reason is when you can make it square, plumb, and true, we're going to make it plumb. We're gonna make it true, that is straight, but the reason that's important is because we are only about two inches away from the property line with the edge of this concrete. It's two inches onto my property, two inches off of his property. If there's some tenth of an inch variation in the location of these hubs, I don't want to make my problem any worse by throwing this thing in here half or three quarters of an inch out of plumb. Besides that, it's good practice. And when you can afford it, and on this job right now I can afford it, we're going to use good practice. The top needs to come over one inch. That's enough to make a difference, isn't it? We can do that with said turnbuckle. Got to go some more. The mistake I made here was I didn't have this turnbuckle in the middle of its throw. So this is moderately embarrassing. I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to bring this to the middle of its throw. It needs to go about an inch. So we will just twist this turnbuckle until it begins to push. Got half of it. There it is. The two ends are plumb. Now we just adjust these turnbuckles to bring this form over. I dropped a concrete stake in here to space the string 5 eighths of an inch off at each end. That means I'll just bring the form until with a tape or a gauge it measures 5 eighths of an inch and we'll know it's straight. We're reading 13 sixteenths. There is 9 sixteenths. We come back a little bit. There it is, straight. This is our worst case scenario. That's an inch and a quarter. It's got to come a mile. These two will come simultaneously. Five eighths, seven eighths. Not room to get a turnbuckle in here without a big fight. Put a brace stake in there. We're down to half an inch. That'll hold it. Nice and straight. So forming concrete's an interesting thing. You have to learn to think in terms of the negative image of what it is that you want to produce. It's kind of like looking at the negative of a photograph where black is white and white is black. The form will be gone, will be thrown away and the concrete will occupy the space that's defined by the form. So a guy can figure that out, that's not rocket science. The thing that sometimes feels like rocket science is balancing the strength that you need in the forming system against being able to tear it apart, to be able to strip it, to be able to break it down and restack the lumber or whatever you're going to do with it. And so that's facilitated with, you know, duplex nails, double-headed nails, scaffolding nails. They'll drive in, they'll come tight, they're pullable. The trick with form work is you never walk away thinking, darn it, I put one too many nails in that whaler, or I put one too many braces on that wall. But occasionally, you'll walk away saying, man, why didn't I put one more nail in that whaler? Why didn't I put one more brace on that wall? And so, understanding that a blowout is so expensive and one or two additional um, reinforcements in your forming system doesn't cost that much. It's always best to go one step further than you think you might need.